I think I'm really bad at drawing the line and saying this kid needs something and I can't give it to them. Yeah, I don't draw the line. I mean, I do, I do what I can when I can do it. I've taught kids who wake up in the morning and they're responsible for getting their siblings awake and feeding them breakfast and getting them all to school. You know, a lot of them have to travel through two or three different gang neighborhoods to get to school. In the winter, I have kids that come to school without hats and coats and gloves. I've had hungry students in my class who couldn't concentrate. I bring in granola bars, other snacks. If you want new books, you need to plan on buying those or funding those. I've filed tax returns for kids, parents, so that they could get financial aid. You know, you're like the only adult that they trust or you're the only adult that they that they like that talks to them like they're a person. So in one of my first several years of teaching, I had a really special kid. He was one of those kids, big and goofy, but, you know, he just added so much to the classroom and I had him in sixth grade and again in eighth grade and he graduated two years ago and when a kid graduates you kind of feel like okay well they made it which is a big deal in Baltimore City because there is a lot of violence that these kids overcome in their neighborhood and it takes a lot to survive in general I think in a lot of communities. I got a phone call from a fellow teacher who told me that he was shot and killed at his home. And to me, it was shocking and overwhelming. And you have this sense that at some point, kids are safe, but it doesn't really feel like black and brown boys are safe in America. Everyone's life is different and everyone has their own struggles and challenges. But if someone believes that a lot of these kids don't have the difficulties that they do, they really shouldn't even be in the classroom. 